Hello, so today we will be solving this problem called the movie festival. So we have a movie festival with n movies and we want to know this and we know the starting and ending time of each movie. So what is the maximum number of movies we can watch entirely? Like in this example here, uh, the first movie lasts from 3 to 5, the second from 4 to 9, and the third from 5 to 8. So we cannot watch the first and second movie because they overlap, but we can watch the first and third movies because they only overlap on the boundary, which doesn't count. So let's copy that example. So the first interval goes from 3 to 5, the second one from 4 to 9, and the third one from 5 to 8. By the way, this is a famous problem, it's called the interval scheduling problem. So interval scheduling and it is a famous example of a greedy algorithm so today we will uh, showcase the inner workings of that algorithm and we will also prove its correctness so the greedy algorithm says the following It tells us to sort these vectors by and by fi finishing time. So the, the the movie that has the earliest finishing time goes first. So this will become something like this: three five five eight and then four nine. So we will process the intervals in this order. And basically we have an initial value that is set to negative one or zero, which, which means that uh, this is the finishing time of the last movie since we haven't started yet. So this would be just negative one. Uh, last movie finishing time. And let's see and TV count of movies we got so far. So basically, since this first movie starts after the finishing time of the last movie, we take it. So we take this, update the finishing time to 5, and mention that we found one solution. Then we move on to the second interval. Its starting time is greater or equal to the finishing time of the last movie, so we're gonna take it as well. So we take this, we update the finishing time to 8 this time. So this becomes 8, and we've got two matches. And when we come to this one, we see that its starting time is less than, than the finishing time of the last movie, so we cannot take this one. And say we had another interval that started from at 10 and lasted till 12, then this interval would be valid because its starting time is larger than the last finishing time so we just update this to 12 and we take this vector uh, this interval and then our count become 3 so to sum it up we sort intervals by finishing time then uh, for each interval if interval uh, starting time is greater or equal to last finishing time we take it otherwise no and that's it and uh, the answer would, would just be the intervals we took so now let's try to prove the correctness of this algorithm so basically uh, let's say that we have let G be the set of intervals that our greedy algorithm gave us. So we will call them J, G1, G2, up to Gn. 
So let's say that our greedy algorithm gave us n intervals. And let's consider the optimal solution that we don't know how to find, but we're gonna prove that these two are equal. So let the optimal solution be something like 01, 02, up to OM. So M intervals. And here, by definition, M has to be larger than or equal to N. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the optimal solution. Then, uh, it is necessary for these to set to have a common, possibly empty, a common prefix that can be possibly empty. That means that some of these vectors will be equal in both in both solutions, uh, these inter this prefix might be empty, which means that from the start G1 can be different from O1, but without loss of generality, we'll just assume that they have some common prefix, and we will disregard it and assume that they start differing at position I. So we will assume that GI for some I here is different from O of i and all this is equal to all of this. Here we see that uh, since this solution is valid by construction, then g of i should not interfere with any of the previous intervals and so shouldn't o of i. And that means that uh, the interval we have to choose now has to have the earliest finishing time because choosing anything besides that uh, is pointless because you want to maximize the chances for the remaining intervals so if we if we uh, uh, disregarded all these intervals and we had to choose the earliest uh, interval uh, the interval with the earliest finishing time after that we will find out that g of i is equal to o of i which means that for the optimal solution, we have to choose the interval with earliest finishing time. This way, we prove that g of i is equal to o of i. And we could continue this way until we get to g to o of n and g of n, proving that they are equal. And then we, we may uh, be left with some other intervals beyond n, but if that were the case, these intervals would have been found by the greedy algorithm as well. And since they haven't, that means that m is actually equal to n. And our greedy algorithm actually produces the optimal algorithm. And this proof is, uh, is known by the proof by exchange of arguments. And I invite you to delve deeper into this. But for our for our problem, this is enough to produce a solution. So as we said, we're just gonna sort the interval by finishing time, and then we will go through them. And at each step, we will update the last uh, finishing time, the finishing time of the last movie and we will check if the starting time of our current movie is larger than the last movie finishing time and if that's the case we just increment our count so let's check out the code we start by reading the number of movies we have to process then we will declare a vector of pair of ints which will hold our intervals and for each movie, we will uh, we will scan the starting and ending time, and we will uh, store them in the first and second of our pairs. Then we will sort our vector using a custom compare function. And to do that, we just use the sort function. We give it an iterator to the beginning of uh, the vector, and an iterator to the end of it, as well as a 
function that does the comparison which takes as we see here it returns a boolean and it takes a pointer to elements in the vector so this is the first element and this is the second element so we have to give it the address of these elements so that if they are not in the right order you would be able to swap them and here this is the criteria for swapping the elements so we do not swap them if uh, the finishing time of the first is less than the uh, finishing time of the second otherwise we swap them so that's for our comparison function then we declare uh, these variables so i would just allow us to look to look to all n movies and this is the end of the last movie as we said we're gonna initialize it with negative one or some negative value uh, to allow the first movie to be anything and this is the number of movies we've uh, found so far then inside our while loop that will go through all the movies we first check that the starting time of this movie is larger than the end of the last movie and if that's the case we will do the following we will increment the number of movies we found we will update the end of the last movie to the end of the current movie and we will move to the next movie otherwise if that's not the case we will just have to continue and to do that we'll just increment i and at the end the variable movies would actually hold the, our answer so we just print it so that's pretty much it let's submit So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.